Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy Michael of the world famous Long Long Honeymoon blog, also known as Lo Loho. Today we have a very special episode of the Lo Loho show for you. One of our most requested topics of all time, Alaska. Yes, we're talking about taking an RV to Alaska and we're going to give you our top secrets that we learned while traversing the Alaska highway. If you're new here, please subscribe to our channel. It takes about two seconds. Subscriptions are free and ensure that you will never miss a video. So you will learn all of our secrets over time. Going to Alaska seems like a rather intimidating proposition. And yes, for us, it was a 14,000 mile round trip, road trip. With that said, don't be too intimidated. Yeah, a lot of people can really psych you out about going on the Alaska Highway. Ignore those people. With a little bit of preparation beforehand, you'll be totally fine. Obviously, you need to take care of all regular maintenance items on your rig. I mean, for us, this means wheel bearings on our travel trailer. It means checking the brakes. It means making sure tires are in good order. I suggest that you bring probably two spare tires. Mm -hmm. The issue you will find is that when you are on the Alaska Highway, there's not a lot of service centers. Some of those areas are so remote that if you had two tire blowouts in a day, you might not be able to find a tire to purchase. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the key is you need to do the prep work up front. There are times when you might be 80 miles between fuel stations be prepared that gas stations are few and far between. Get jerry cans for fuel and for water. 20 liters of fuel. Some people choose to put protective cladding along the front of their travel trailer or even the front of their motorhome. There are large logging trucks going up and down the Alaska Highway and from time to time there's going to be some rocks that get kicked in your direction. In our case, we have gravel guards on our Airstream and we just kind of figured that's what the gravel guards are for. But there's no denying the front of our Airstream took yeah. a little bit of damage from gravel. So if you are really paranoid about that, you should consider just getting some sort of cladding to place along the front of your rig. Tube of silicone would be a good thing to bring with you because you need to be prepared to do a few unusual emergency <laughs> repairs when you're going up and down the Alaska Highway. If you rely on a generator for power, do a little tune-up. Give it a new air filter and spark plug before you leave. You want to bring your tool kit that's well stocked with tools. You want to make sure that the batteries in your rig are in good working condition. Tape, <laughs> yes, even duct tape may come in handy at times on the Alaska Highway. And by the way, prepare to be sitting for a while because you're gonna be towing your rig or driving your rig substantial distances every day. So I have like a lumbar support, a little pillow. Yeah. <laughs> Just really helps, all these little creature comforts. The Milepost Guide. It's basically a catalog of sorts that lists everything that you will encounter along the Alaska Highway. So you can look at that mile post and know how far you are from a gas station, how far you are from a post office, how far you are from a grocery store. And one reason why that's really important is because cell phones usually don't work in a large portion of the Alaska Highway. And actually you're better off buying the mile post beforehand because you can buy it once you're on the Alaska Highway, but you're gonna pay a lot more for it. In fact, we have a link for you in the YouTube description for this video to the current edition of the mile post, buy it here before you leave on your trip. Well, here we are. Here we are, mile zero. You know, it's exciting to be here. It's been uh, an incredible slog just getting here. I think we've gone over 3,000 miles on the trip meter, like 3,500 miles. I was really expecting the worst when we finally yeah. got <laughs> on the Alaska Highway. And when we did, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. 
We'd had so many people really say, oh, the road is so terrible and it's gonna be so, so rough and, and awful that we were really just braced for just horrific conditions. And while there are sections that are pretty rough, you know, it's nothing really that bad. One of the most unique obstacles along the Alaska Highway are what is known as frost heaves. Frost heaves are sections of highway that dip. Fortunately, most of the frost heaves have been marked well in advance and there will be orange flags along the highway. So you will know before you reach a frost heave where it's located. If the highway is not too crowded, you can simply steer your rig around the frost heave. As long as you pay attention to those little flags and you slow down, you won't have any problems. So the Alaska Highway is actually surprisingly good. What you won't find along the highway are a lot of amenities. So you need to have your rig well stocked with food and plan on doing a lot of cooking in your RV. Now that is a hell of a hamburger. We really enjoyed the Canadian provincial parks. Throughout British Columbia and the Yukon Territory, you can find some of the most beautiful campgrounds in North America. They are cheap. Sometimes they even include free firewood. Now it's often dry camping, but they're simply beautiful campgrounds and they're readily available and you can pretty much show up anytime you want. And when you're on the Alaska Highway, one destination that you cannot miss is Liard Hot Springs. Don't drive past Liard Hot Springs, especially if you want to rest your aching back after days of driving on the Alaska Highway because Liard Hot Springs is one of the most unique and special natural hot springs we've ever encountered in North America. That's right, and that is the one provincial park that we encountered that was full the first night we got there. Now they do have some basically roadside overflow parking that you can park at across the street from the entrance, which is what we did our first night. If you don't know, Liard Hot Springs is a natural hot springs area. It's like a long creek, and at one end of the creek is extremely hot water, Yes. and it flows down into some cold water, and at the far end of the creek, is extremely cold water. Yes. So it's a lot of fun swimming up and down this creek. It's an incredibly lush, natural environment. Everybody can find their perfect temperature <laughs> and uh, it's just a great place to stop for at least a night if you're in the area. We stopped for two just so we could really enjoy it for a full day. Now, the capital of the Yukon Territory is a town called Whitehorse. It's a town of about 15 to 20,000 people, but after traveling up the Alaska Highway, it's going to feel like downtown Manhattan, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that big, but it definitely will feel like you've reached civilization again. You'll find a Walmart, you'll find um, some restaurants, some coffee shops. Uh, they have a really nice library there that you can go in and use to check your email, that sort of thing. They have Wi-Fi that you can use. Um, so we definitely took advantage of that. You can boondock in the parking lot of the White Horse Walmart. They also have a dump station at the Walmart gas station. So that's another benefit of stopping for the night in White Horse. <laughs> All right, we're in the Yukon, uh, somewhere between Haynes Junction and Beaver Creek. Punctured a water tank, we've got a water leak. It's really, really not good. Something to be aware of, in recent years, the road around the Destruction Bay area has been very destructive. And so most of the Alaska Highway was actually great for us. It was smooth sailing. And then there was this one patch of road that was one of the worst roads we have ever been on in North America. Yeah. So like you have these fears of the Alaska Highway and the fears are mostly unfounded. Yeah. Except for that one little stretch of highway. It was just, you know, potholes and rough and you just had to go slow. It had some sort of coating on the road that was like oily. And so it covered our rig with like this oily, cloudy film. Yeah. 
make sure you bring bear spray. You encounter bears so frequently in that Yukon Territory, Alaska area, that bear spray is super important. And I suggest you have one per person because if you're in a campground and you're not walking right next to each other, you never know if you're gonna round a corner and have a grizzly bear coming your way. And there's horses over in here and the grizzlies have killed six of them already in the last month. If I see a bear, I charge everybody $100. <laughs> so everybody hopes you won't see a bear. I thought you could. <laughs> Another place we want to be sure and tell you about, it's in the Yukon Territory, and it's called Discovery Yukon Lodgings. On the property, they have a number of vintage American military vehicles that were left in the Yukon Territory after the military constructed the original Alaska Highway. So if you're a military buff, you're gonna to wanna to stop and check out a lot of these vehicles. There, and you guys are right on top of the original Alaska Highway. This is it. Alaska Highway, This is it. This is, the, this is what And there's one fellow with a six-wheeled vintage military vehicle that has been restored to pristine running standards. Yes. And he will take people out on evening excursions from time to time to look for grizzly bears. So if you have a chance to stop there, we highly recommend it. They're really great people, really nice. They know the area like the back of their hand and it's just a really nice stop on your way up or down the Alaska Highway. I think they have a nightly campfire there. Mm -hmm. And there's just a feeling of hospitality. It's so. kind of unique. Alaska, Yukon. Now vote. I'm in two countries at once. Taking that first step out the door and saying, we're gonna do this. I really think that's the hardest part. Make the most of, of every day and try to appreciate every day. Because for many of us, this is a once in a lifetime trip for a lot of reasons. It's expensive, it's a long way to go. You know, there are probably easier ways to see Alaska, but I don't think there's any better way. I think we're a pretty good team. I think one person tries to help the other. I think that's important. You know, you need to be on the same team with your partner. Ooh, there's a big button on your shoulder. Sorry. <laughs> Pack some bug spray. <laughs> Sorry, it was like right there. <laughs> yeah, that is a big bug. Coming up in part two of this special video series, the truth about RV camping in Alaska. Get it free. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll never miss a video. She's chewing on it. Is our camper unlocked? If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>